to the computer. Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. Thank you for joining me and thank you for you ladies that have joined me. The ladies that have joined me are either mem they're members of the channel, either at the quilt attic level or at the designer level. So when you are at those levels of the memberships, then you get to join on these meetings. And then you also get to view every meeting that we've ever done. So right now, this is our 36th, I think, um, something like that, 30 or 36. So all of those are available to for anybody that is an attic level or a designer level member to see as long as they're members right through the YouTube channel. Now, normally these are private and we don't put them on the public, but this one I am gonna put on the public so that everybody can see because I'm gonna spend time talking about an additional program to Electric Quilt. And it's kind of, you know, it's out there, but I think that a lot of people just don't know what its advantages are and how it can help them in design. And so I thought that would be nice. And we'll cover another thing along the way too. So um, I don't, of the people that I'm seeing, do any of you have block base yet? I do. Uh, yeah. All right. So it is one out and it's one of those things. It's not cheap. Um, you know, waiting for EQ to have a sale. Always a yeah. good idea. Um, and it's the program. But then there is an encyclopedia. I think is that showing backwards for you guys? Or is that from? No, no oh, yeah. that's good. All right. So this is the encyclopedia and it is a thick book and all of the um, blocks and the information on block base and in the book are all from Barbara Breckman, who has been widely known as and considered, I guess, one of the foremost knowledgeable people of the history, history of quilts and quilt blocks and how they were used and stuff like that. One of the things that I love best about block base is that history. So I am going to share a screen. All right, so everybody is seeing the screen? Yes. Okay, let me get you guys all bigger so if somebody raises their hand, I can see you raising your hand on my other screen. So this is basics of block base. Um, this is what it looks like. So it looks similar to EQ, but it's got so many more different things and then some things it doesn't have. Here, I'm gonna start going right across the top, um, block base one, the patch lines. And so here you can erase the lines, or show them, which we have that in EQ too. And then you can see it as a line drawing, a gray drawing, or color. Okay. So that's just kind of the basics. And then display, you can have some of them have hundreds all in one category. So you can see more on a page if you want. And because I'm old, I usually do it as the biggest size available. Okay. Going down here are all the files, and there are over 4,000 blocks. When you're looking at any of them, so let's just click on this one here, what you get down here underneath is the information about it. So this one is um, Barbara's numbering system of 141A, which we'll get to later, how you might use that, and the default block size. So especially because this is not a square block, you know, it's got this odd measurements here, which I found something cool that we can do with that. And then these are its category. It's a one patch. Its subcategory is diamond. That information will come in handy in a little bit too. Over here, you're going to find the publishing name. So it's been published, at least known in publishing, at three different <coughs> names, which we know the blocks can have different names. So these are the three different names that it had. And these are the three different sources that Barbara Breckman found the, this block in. Um, and then over here again, the characteristics. It's going to give you sometimes a lot and sometimes not a lot, but these characteristics, the actual phrases, you'll see throughout the program. So like the phrase, that piece is not a square. Yep, you'll find that anytime you click on this one here. That piece is not a square. So there's different things that you'll find in here that are repeated that are can kind of be nice when you're doing the searching in particular. Um, these are a one patch. So this is, you know, the diamond, one diamond, one size. Even this block here, the blue and the white diamonds are all the same exact size. So all of the ones in this particular category are just one size. Now I'll show you later on how we use these in EQ, 
But I'm looking at these, and to me, these don't look like a block at all, right? Um, these are really just kind of segments of how you may put the blocks together. I mentioned that because when we come down here to the bottom, this one right here, when we're looking at traditional blocks, will be very important. You'll see the very the usefulness of it. Hi, Sonia. Um, but like when you're looking at one of these, well, that one's not bad. Let me find another one. So like this one. If I do the quilt layout, it's going to show it as a horizontal layout. Well, that looks ridiculous. Um, it's going to show it as a horizontal layout with sashings. Yep, even more ridiculous. So you see that these particular blocks in this one patch, this little part here really doesn't help you with your imagination and how you might use these blocks later on, although that first one was pretty cool. When you get into the second category, now we have kind of the same idea. You know, these are blocks that we can use in EQ, generally speaking, in a custom set type of a um, situation. Um, but like this one, maybe I could use this in the quilt layout. All right. The, all right. I would have never thought that that's what it would look like if you made that block one after another after another with sashings on point, um, on point with um, blank squares and then vertical stripes. Horizontal, so different ways you can lay it out. This one here cracks me up. Off-center off -center medallion layout. What, why? Why? Okay, I don't know, but it is what it is, okay? <laughs> um, so there's a lot of, you know, and you can just you know, go down and you just will be honestly slightly overwhelmed with what you see. I love these ones, the um, hexagonal ones. I've used these a couple of times in designing. I think that for me, the thing that I probably, oh, I love this one. The thing I probably use most is when I can't find the block I want in electric quilt pre-designed, because I never want to, you know, design a block that's already been designed. I, you know, I don't want to redo something. So I'll come in here and try to find those. When you get into, down into here, again, the, I think the first three sections, four sections maybe, are really odd. You know, they're nice. I'll show you how you can use them, but they're not a block. Okay, curve piecing. Okay. Strip quilts, same way. Strip quilts really are ones that could be used in strips. So with this one, let's go here. Horizontal, yeah, that would be boring. With um, sashings on the diagonal. But that one, a vertical strip layout. So any one of these blocks could be used go here and go to the vertical strip layout with this one. That would be kind of cool. And they, you know, offset this every other one. So that's how those work. After you get through number four, then you're really into more blocks. Mm -hmm. Here are the blocks. And this is where they really start happening. Um, all of these are very cool and they're very organized. Um, this one has blocks with applique center. And now if I pick this and do that quilt layout, get over here to where it's on point, that would be a really cute little quilt, right? Oh, this one though, I guess if we, no, it wouldn't be turned right. If that weren't on its side, that I guess wouldn't be bad if you're gonna do a lot of quilting. Okay. Full of triangles. So this entire thing, it's going to, and it does have a progression. I have found, you know, the first one was empty baskets. Then you had baskets with flowers, then baskets with triangles, and baskets full of diamonds. Um, you know, they're kind of, she kind of sticks with a theme, but everything in here is going to be something that is, you know, called something. It's a leaf. It's an airplane. It's a bird. Okay. So that makes sense, things that are realistic. So you can think of different ways that you might be able to use this. I, I look at this little penguin guy um, and some of the other ones, and I think, you know what, that could be really cool if you were doing an Arctic one, maybe a, um, designing something like um, Elizabeth Hartman, you know, where she puts all the animals together in one quilt. You know, that could be a pretty cute idea. Other animals. Holy cow, there's a lot of other animals. Somewhere in here, there's a lion that I thought would be really cool for me to make him two and three blocks. So this is when a, and it'll give a description here, the repeat of two separate blocks, these separate blocks are combined usually in an alternating pattern. So all that same information, look at all the names, this block, this one up here in the top is half. Nine and four patch, new snowball, grandmother's shorts, 
grandmother shorts quilt. I, that must be Sally Goodspeed's grandmother. I'm, I'm going to guess that one anyway. So in, even when you look in here, and I'll come to this kind of information in a little bit again, but this looks like Nancy Cabot called it the federal chain. And when I clicked on that, look at all the information about this. How Barbara Breckman was able to accumulate all of this information. She has to have seen, been to every one of the quilt museums in the nation and been to all the, you know, that wherever they store that kind of information because she's been doing this for, it seems like I'd say 30 years easily. So all of this is gonna be the information on the publishers, the reference when this was made. And so things like this, 1932, that will be another thing that we'll talk about. Okay. Um, sash and back, what's this one? Oh, okay, these are interesting sashings. But again, they wouldn't make us easy, they wouldn't make an interesting quilt unto themselves. Uh, well, well see, yeah. if I could just, some of those quilts, some of those blocks, like the first one that you had that you said, it was just that one in the middle. You can take that and make it bigger. I mean, the way it looked, it's like, it's yeah. more like a modern quilt. Yeah. But you could also put that same block and blow it up so that it's a one block quilt. It'd be a one block wonder. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it is kind of gives you that idea. And for me, it's that feeling of, yeah, that's very modern quilting, um, you know, where they have a more blank space in their stuff. Right. Some of them like this could be an entire whole quilt, but there's another right. section that has entire whole quilts like that. Um, these are, you know, ones with, Pieced sashing, pieced block and sashings. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Then you get down here and you'll get some that are just a lot more familiar. And any one of these would be an interesting quilt layout, right? I would like that, okay? Um, you go through all of these kinds of things, right? Like an attic window. Oh, okay, that is kind of like an attic window. Yeah, all right. Um, equal nine patches, blocks that are going to be divided by into nines, I think, you or three sections, like one, two, three, so nine inches is its base, like an Ohio star, um, like a double hourglass. I swear, I've never clicked through every single one of these. It would be impossible. Um, 25 squares. But when you get on down into here, squares, squares, what are there? How many different categories? And within each category is other subcategories of these whole things. The eight point stars, love those, looking like Lemoyne stars. I always, always love things that are on point. I mean, set with set in seams, other stars. All right. This I thought was really quite interesting. These are literally quilts designed already. Okay. This one. That wouldn't be a very exciting quilt, but it would be one quilt. So you could do it kind of Amish style. What I love in this category are these, like the big ones that would be like the, um, oh, what's that called? The compass. compass. That one would be compass, but is it a dahlia? The giant dahlia? I think that might be like what this one with this curved piece. I've never made one. Um, probably should at some point. But this one here, big old carpenter star. I love that. Its name is unknown. Popular in, ten in Pennsylvania. The original block source is unknown. Now they have this one as a 12 inch block. Ooh. Okay, that would be impossible. If we, I'm gonna put that one to my favorites because there is a category up here. It was actually saves things as your favorite. So I just saved that one as a favorite. The exporting it, you can export it as a picture, as a PNG. I don't know if that means like a, I don't know what that one is, but the SVG you could do. Um, and then it could, I think it could upload into like, like the scan and cut or the silhouette or those kinds of things in that format. So I thought that was cool. Um, the quilt layout, you know, that would be ridiculous. It really is just one block in this particular category. But when you get into print, you've got, it'll print the block. And all of the same kinds of things here as you get with EQ. So this type of a menu should look quite familiar to you. And if we were going to preview that, oops, the preview is showing up on my other screen. Can I get it to show up over here? Um, 
Okay, I got to make you guys smaller to try and figure out how to get this screen to show up. There it is. Wow. All right, can you guys see the line drawing now? Yes. All right, because yes. this one's a 12 inch, so obviously it's not going to print up on a full page, but you can change the size of it. So you can make it be eight by eight. So then, and this is all just like an EQ. If you're printing up a block, why does it keep jumping it over to my other screen? There it is. Um, not quite eight by eight, but you see the idea. And even here, there was something else. Oh, if it was multiple pages, you can save it right here. Instead of having to print and then change your printer to a PDF, you can just tell it, save it as a PDF. There are some features in this that I wish very much so that EQ would make into the EQ program itself. Okay. Miscellaneous, I can't remember what's on the miscellaneous. With diamonds, it's like I thought we already did diamonds. Oh my goodness, there's more and there's more, right? So all of these are things that you're gonna be able to find the information about You know where it came from, who started this, um, click on this and you see that Clara Stone is something, you know, where it was published, 1906. Some of these have been around a long, long time. So that's actually the whole library right there. So I would call this your block library with this. The next one is where the fun really begins because this search menu, the, the search, whatever you call that engine, is I think pretty darn extraordinary. And it doesn't seem to get bogged down. There's sometimes I'll put so many things in there, I would think it would get bogged down. Um, the only way that I would use the Breckman ID is if I had the encyclopedia, because the encyclopedia has the number. So I could put in number into the search field, 2427A search, there we go. So if I were looking at that from the catalog, that's probably the only time that I think that I would use the Breckman ID. The published name. This is probably the easiest of all of the ways, you know, the, the thing that you would most likely think of to use. You would go, all right, I want to make a snowman. Put in snowman and let's see. Uh, nope, there's nothing with the snowman. How about snowball? There. All of these are ones that their name, something in their name has snowball to them. And so these are, this is where you're going to actually find them. So it said view in the library, right? So this search is a name. You're thinking, you know, I want to do a, oh, I don't know if there's any. I was thinking Michigan. Then I don't know if there's a Michigan block. Oh, there is. Look at that. All of these, this one is from Michigan Hearth and Home. Oh, goodness gracious, a ton of information on that. Michigan Star, I didn't know we had a star. Oh, that's <laughs> <cute. I> was, <laughs> the things I don't know, it just blows my mind. So you put anything in there and you're going to find that information. All right. Um, and then you can just go, all right, well, I'm going to just look at what I think the name is. Oh, Mexican star. Okay. Oh, that's what a Mexican star looks like. This list, look at how big it is. Wada, wada, wada. We're only in the Bs. There's the Cs. And these are all the names of all the blocks. And some of them actually have more than one block in them. I think the majority in this it still goes on and it goes on and it goes on. There, now they've got two blocks. So these two have both been called the open window block. So this as a listing is huge. It goes way down to here. I don't know how many it actually is. It's not numbered. Yep. Some have more than one, some have two, all right? So that's gonna be if you're doing it by the published name. And that's where you kind of are gonna do most of your searching, you know, for things just, I don't know what I want, but I'm going to call it a star, and then you're going to get lots and lots of stars. Categories, this is where the search engine, I just think, kind of sort of blows my mind. You've got skill level, beginner, intermediate, advanced. If you're thinking, yeah, I want this to be a quick quilt that I'm going to design, you go with beginner, and it won't show you any blocks that are above beginner level. You're thinking, and I want to do it all 
with curved pieces of triangles, you know, any of these, but I'm gonna go with, I want it to be rotary cutter friendly. Time period. Well, I'm gonna make this for my own, Bill's mom, and she was born in the ninth, well, she's 93 right now. So how old? I think it was like the 1930s, right? So if I was gonna mm -hmm. make something for Oma, I'd make some, you know, maybe pick a timeline there. Design categories. This is there's a, this is a pretty big listing. I'd be like, you know, no, I'm not gonna pick anything. I'm gonna let it decide from the information I gave it so far. Do I want it to be a holiday thing? Okay. It's only, so it's for her birthday. So I'll pick birthday, see if I get any of that kind of stuff. Sometimes you put too many things in and then you're in trouble. So I'm not gonna put anything in here. And I'm gonna search and see what it finds. There it is. It's a beginner one. It's rotary cutter friendly, which these are not exactly rotary cutter friendly, but they could um, between 1930 and 1939. And it's called the Four Crowns. And for some reason, they think it looks something must be about a birthday in the description here because I put birthday. And so I can make Oma a quilt. Oh, I just thought of something else. I'm gonna go back up to published names. I'm gonna do Dutch. She, look at all those Dutch ones. Let's do Netherlands. Nope, nothing with the Netherlands. Let's call them Dutch. I guess that's what we're gonna do. So with the category searching, the these ones down here that get really specific with the dates and stuff, yeah, maybe I wouldn't use those very much, but the beginner, intermediate, advanced, and definitely here. If you love foundation piecing, you're going to find, a, oh, the search is too broad. All righty. Let's go intermediate paper piecing or foundation piecing. Is that going to be too many too? Nope. All of these could be foundation piece. There's that lion. Okay. So let's look at the lion. I'm going to add them to my favorites. And let's, what can I do for printing? If I foundation printed him, all right, let's say 24 inches. Okay, is it thinking? There it is, oh, it's on my other page though. There, gotta bring it over to the other page. So this is how that lion could be done. Oops, here's the zoom over here. Uh, it's slowing down a little bit, there, all right. Once you're here, it's going to be even easier than doing it in EQ. You know how when you're in EQ and you're like, oh, okay, here's my things. Well, I really want this piece to be printed as a full one. And then you have to click the rotate button, rotate button, rotate button. Nope, here you just take that little handle wah, and you turn them around and you can move them around to get the most efficient printing on here. This is one of the things that I wish that they would change up so that they would change EQ to actually have this, you know, organizational print feature. I've already told them three or four times that, you know, this is one of the things I would love, then they could do that. So he could be foundation piece. He could, you know, here's your numbering, Whoa. your piecing order, all of that kind of stuff, just like we would expect from EQ, but in EQ, there is no line, no elephant. I could make the elephant. There he is right there. He's not quite as cute as that other one that we saw, Dana. <laughs> it's kind of square, but that's okay. He still would be fun. Um, so all of these different things. This is the one, the English paper piecing, that I thought I really wish that the feature that they have in here for this was on EQ. This is what started my, we need to fix EQ. So all of these, I'm going to go to advanced. Oh, there's no advanced English paper piece. Go to intermediate then. All right. So when you're here, all of these single blocks, this is one I'm going to play with in a little bit. I'm going to add her to my favorites so she'll be easier to find. So let's see. I'm trying to find something that has different sizes and shapes of something. Um, oh, that would be wicked. Yeah, let's not be wicked. Let's go, yeah, we're not gonna get too difficult then. Ooh, this one, all right. So this one right here, I'm gonna go to the print feature 
and I'm going to do templates. Now we can do templates in EQ, right? I'm going to use the 12 inch block. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so that we can see it better. 16 inch block. I'm going to not have a seam allowance, so no seam allowance. You can do the dash one, the solid seams, but with English paper piecing, typically you want no um, seam allowance. And here, this is what you would normally get with EQ. Right here is something I wish they would add to EQ. Print unique templates only. That's what we have now with EQ. So if we go to preview this, jump over there, this is what it's going to look like. Here's your templates. You can easily move them. I love that. Take this, move them up here. You can rotate them just like I did with the foundation thing. And then watch this. I can say, let's say on this one, you know, I want to be able to fill a page. This over here. I want to fill a page with all of this particular diamond shape. I can just copy and paste it. Paste. So that I can fill a page. If I'm going to do a block like this, I could have as many of these as I want. We can't do this in EQ. Um, mm. When I do this for my English paper piecing patterns, I, that's when I started using the Inkscapes program because I can do this in Inkscapes, but you can't do this in EQ. And so when I found out that this had it here, I was like, you guys need to make it. And so I really hope that when we get to EQ9, this type of feature is there because you can manipulate these templates and you can copy them and make more of them as many as you want on your page. And then they have this one, print all the templates. You can't do this in EQ. So with this one, and I can do my, you know, my black kind of guy larger if I want to, this is going to be a big file. Bring it back. Oops. Lots and lots and lots of pages. Um, I thought that would take it down to the other. Maybe I'm making it work. Too. Yep, I'm making it work too fast. Right. So here's my large one. But now it's telling me that they, these all are within that. So every template for this entire thing I have right now. So instead of even having to copy them, you know, maybe I would put all my bees over here and I would, you know, definitely make things more paper economically. So it would print them nice and even. And this would be really fun to do in, um, as English paper piecing. I think it'd be fun. But you can put them together. And then my method for English paper piecing is where I'm taking this and I'm printing it on the um, Ricky Tim Stable stuff or the Creative Stable by Bozel printing it on that so then I don't have to take my paper out. I just wash it later. So that is how you can use black base all by itself. Okay. Any one of these, you can do that, you know, quilt layout with it just to get ideas. Actually, that one's kind of cool. I like that. And let's look at this one because this one would be one that we could use in EQ and I'll show you how you can do that. So if I'm going to use this one right here, I want to look at whatever its number is. So it's 423.3, right? Because once you own block base, they're all in EQ, but how do you find them is the big question. So where, when I'm looking and I find something in block base that I want, then I go to the block library in EQ, and I'm just going to search that number, that Barbara Brackman number. And it's going to find the block. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, if I had to put in all the names and everything, that just kind of seems silly, I think. So this is my block. I'm going to add them to my sketchbook and close it. This particular block would be used in a custom set. So I'm going to go new, come on all the way over here to custom set. I'm going to look at my layout. Yeah, 48 inches sounds interesting. And now I'm going to find that block. So here he is. Now remember with custom sets, we're going to come over here and you can't take a cut on layer one and you can't just plunk it in. It just doesn't work that way. It's not a traditional block. Custom sets will never work that way. So what you have to do is hold your shift key down and drag. There is your block. 
Now, what I'll do, because I'll be going, you know, is he square? Is he not? This one, I think maybe I should make square. 13 inches sounds good. But to just double check, I'm going to look at the um, back here and go, all right, so it is a square block, 16 by 16. And the trouble was I was working with this one. And she is, and we are going to do that one, so I'm going to write her down. So this is two, three, seven. She's not symmetrical, I guess, or she's not square. Let's go with that word. Um, she's 7.065 times four, okay? So if you're gonna use this block, then going back to the block base to see what it sizes so that when you're resizing it, you're doing that proportionately. Okay? So if we're gonna be using this one, I'm gonna take it up here. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a twist. I'm thinking, well, that's straight up there, but I don't know that I can get it all of them to be straight. Let's blow that up. That kind of straight? Yeah, I don't know that that's a real diamond. But as straight as he's going to get. But this would be an English paper piece thing, so I guess it wouldn't matter if it was straight up there at the top. All right. So then I could use this, copy it over. And then I think this will actually, no, it won't. I thought that one would actually, that, that edge would actually link inside there. It won't. All right, let me find another one that I did. So this one ended up in a motif. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, there's my block. There's my work table. Let me get rid of these. All right, let me go find that motif again. And why it landed in motif, I don't, I don't know. It's applique, but it doesn't have to be a motif. This would be another one. I don't remember what size he was supposed to be. So it was, it was this one here. So eight by eight. So I'm going to adjust him. Oops. To eight by eight. And I'm thinking, all right, that's kind of small. But now at least I know the percentage, the size of it. So I'm going to go 16 by 16. This one I thought was kind of interesting because they're all just that clamshell shape, but they go together in such a way. So like that little, where's that little pointy guy? There he is. So if I take him and if I rotate him to here, I can make that ooh, stick right inside there. Okay, oops, and try and get him lined up. And then sometimes, I got really obsessed with this one today. I was like, you know, oh, wait a minute, he won't fit in there. And then I was going, well, if I rotate him, will he fit in there? Well, okay, yeah, he can fit over here. And I just, it, it was kind of fun. It was like a puzzle. I don't know, do you guys like puzzles? And then trying to figure out from there, okay, but how am I gonna fit something in here, I really couldn't, well, I could rotate him, but then I think I had to somehow, was that it? Because sometimes I could use it and I could kind of overlay it so it was covering up some things. No, not that way. It was definitely a puzzle. I think you get the idea. Okay, let's take it from here. So this one can go inside here. And you could really play with this. Like I said, I got a little obsessed and started, yeah, probably spent way too much time just trying to get those little puzzles. And then I blew it up and everything and stuff. And I thought, you know, that could be really fun to do some different coloring. Oops, fabric. Oh, not eye drops, just paintbrush. Thank you very much doing different coloring and what you could actually come up with with this. And this would be something that, yeah, you could do this English paper piecing, or if you were just, you know, absolutely nuts, you could actually do all this curved piecing on a clamshell. And that, I mean, I like things that require extra effort, but that's way more extra effort than I want to put into something like that. The other one that I played with was that black. Uh, yep, let's not save it. This one came from 
um, that was again on this kind of uh, one that English paper piecing one. And come to find out the whole thing is just diamonds. If I do the print from here in templates and print unique templates only, shrink it. I wish it would come over to the screen size every time. There. Yep, it had this one and a side one. And I'm pretty sure that C and A are actually exactly the same. So I took it, I found this one and brought it over into EQ and block tool, set block, blocks, and there it was. And so I had to drop it into the second layer. But this is when I was like, you know, but I don't know what proportion he is. Now, keep in mind, in truth, we could take this and make it be like that, and I could still English paper piece it. It would still work, right? Um, I could rotate him. I could play with them. I could, you know, do different things. You can, like here, I'm going to do up there. You know, stop rotating, you know. I could make it be a square instead of being a diamond. But I really wanted it to look like, whoops. Well, I guess we're going to have to make it look like what it looked like in the other thing. Don't know how I did that. So here I'm going to set it. And this, I was like, you know, well, I wanted it to be that large diamond, like in black base. So if I'm looking here, it was 7.065 by 4. Let's see if this will work again for me. Okay. With 7.065 by 4. All right. I'm thinking, all right, that's pretty cool. That's teeny tiny. Like, you know, what happens to Betsy? What would I do with something like that, right? And then I thought, if I click this, and instead of 7 point whatever that and that is, if I say I want it to be 15 inches, it actually does it for me because I preserve the aspect ratio while restoring. Now, I am sure that somewhere along the line when I was not going to math class, I would have learned what aspect ratio was. I don't know what it is. But I know that for EQ, that means that if you put in one number, it's going to make the other number match it so that it will all work together. Um, yeah, I didn't go to algebra class very often until college. And then from here, I brought it over here. Now, what I think, what the other thing I tried to do was to rotate it. I thought it'd be cool if I could make it into a star. And I couldn't quite get it to match up. Um, See, can I do it this time? Or maybe I was doing it with this. So let's blow that up. Let's see if we can get this to match up. Because I was trying to do it with this, and I couldn't get it quite to line up properly. Well, and of course, right now it's going to do it great. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. Okay. <laughs> All right, happy. So I could actually make a star out of this. You know what it was? I think that I was trying to, well, I'll just put this one right there. I was trying to do the rotating with this, and it was not working it quite right. Although maybe I didn't do the aspect ratio quite right. And here, rotate that. Now that would be so cool. I'm not sure how I would set it. Would I just do it as a big star? And then I could do like, you know, this is some sort of diamond. I could make that work. I think you get the idea of that there. And then put another one up here. Okay. So if I did that, and this is a custom set, then I could take one of these diamond shapes and fill it in here. And then that would make a octagon. Is the octagon six or is that? Yeah, oct or is octagon eight? Eight. All right. Thank you. Don't leave me floundering here, you guys. <laughs> it's one of those. So this would be, you know, I could make that into a big octagon. And here I am in EQ. When I want to do the printing, do the templates, oh, print directly onto the block. This is what it gives me. One, two, three, four. That's it. I can't take that. I can't copy it. I can move it. I can rotate it. Um, click on it. I can rotate it, but I can't make multiples of it. And there isn't that option 
here, number of copies. I don't think that would do it. That's not what it's telling me. That's telling me for how many copies. Let me see if I'm missing something. Is that up front, previews? There's not. And so I mentioned to them that, you know what? If it could do what Blockbase do, you know, they've already obviously got the technology or the programmability of this of it. So you would think that they'd be able to do that. So if you guys happen to, you know, talk to somebody or anything in EQ and you want to mention that too, if they know lots and lots of people would like to have that feature be in here and the rotating, because here we can just rotate there. That's it. We can't be specific how we're rotating here. Whereas in block base, you could just grab that little handle and put it any way that you wanted it to be. So that is how it works with EQ. You can go, you know, any block within, uh, let's say something here. Oops, get rid of that. Search, looking for just a traditional block, All right? So if you've got just a traditional block, you just remember the number, it's a seven, 25. I'm going to come to EQ to the library, my block library. I'm going to search my note card 725. Oops, not import, search. So there's four, seven of them that have that. And then you just add whatever one it is you want to your EQ. And then you can use that in any of the quilts. That you're designing. So let me see if I can find that. So I'm going to do a horizontal. Yeah, that layout will be just fine for now. Got that. Design. There's the block. So then I can put the block in and I can do with it whatever I want. You can even do the same editing that you would do. So any of the blocks that are in your library, you can edit them, change them just like you do anything else that you do in EQ. So with block base, you actually, you know, you acquire 4,000 more blocks and or block clusters. Because some of those I wouldn't really call a block. You know, they're, you know, even the ones that are a whole quilt, which that one is one I definitely want to make. Um, but then some of those, you know, they're more of a cluster than that. But that is how I designed the Jack's quilt. Because I found a Jack's block in, EQ, in the block base. And that's how I got the understanding of how the block worked. So then I could build my own to be what I wanted it to be because the one in the block base was like three or four of them in a row and that was not helping me get the setting that I wanted. But then I was able to understand how the block was drawn. So then I was able to draw it myself and do with whatever I wanted with that. So that's block base. Probably I'd wait for it to go on sale because they seem to do that. I, of course, bought mine on a panic. I had to have it and I didn't get it on sale. Um, I hope you got yours on sale, Sonia. I can't see you. So I'm going to think that you're frugally minded and you got yours on sale because they were just running some Christmas sales. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the block that I designed for the pineapple log cabin. So I did last night on um, YouTube. I did a live. It was a pineapple log cabin. Built as you go with easy sashings. I hope that you have seen it or that you'll see it in the foreseeable future because I thought it was pretty darn cool. So for that one, I again went back to block base to look and see what I could find. So let's go back to where we were. All right. So in block base, I was like, you know, I want to do a pineapple, right? So I searched pineapple by the published name. And this is what it came up with, which these were, you know, those definitely weren't what I was looking for, but this kind of was the idea. And I was disappointed because I knew in my head that there was an easier way to do it. If I was going to do a quilt as you go, I didn't want it to be this complicated. This one was okay. And this gave me the idea of how I could proceed but it really wasn't giving me what I wanted. So I took this one and I remembered the number 2638. 2638. Then I went to EQ and looked in the library. And this again, kind of surprised me. 
because when I put in pineapple here, there were 110. But most of them were kind of crazy patch. This one here was more traditional, but still more complicated than I needed for the black. But all of these are like funkadoodle ones. I, they, they were pretty fun. These were kind of the idea, but too complicated. And then this was not the idea. So I don't know if you can see the difference. Oops, wait a minute. I wanted it to be like this, where the um, triangles and the logs came together with this, as opposed to some of them, the triangle, I don't know, there, it was really weird I, when I went back and forth with different ones. Like this would not have done what I wanted at all. Although they are all pretty cool and would be really fun. If I were doing one of these, I would be doing a foundation. And I knew that I wanted the diagonal going this way too. But none of them had what I really wanted. I didn't want to have all these different sizes of the actual, like here, of the pineapple strip. So it goes one, two, three, four, and see how that's small, medium, large. I wanted it simpler than that. So I decided I had to, in this case, design it myself. So block, new block, easy draw. And I was making a 12 inch. Now I got to try and remember, what did I first do? I played with it for quite some time. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Duh. Yeah, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open that project so I can remember how I designed the log cabin. There she is. Ah, uh, yeah, we better save that one. Just in case. So here's all that. So I was playing with all of these different ones, looking at them going, that's not it, that's not it. Then this one, where did I find this one? Or did I make that one? I might have made that one. But this is what I ended up with. Did I make that one? I think I did make that one because originally it had the square and a square in the middle. So oops, she didn't open the right one. No. Go to my sketchbook again and edit that one. There it is. So what I did originally is I just started, I probably drew it five times before I decided on the sizes and stuff. I knew that I wanted the strip width to start with a two inch wide strip. When I did the quilt as you go log cabin, I started with the two and a half inch strip because I used a jelly roll, which meant when it was pieced, it was a two inch wide section left unquilted. So if you've ever watched that video, I went back and I added a line of quilting in between it all. So then it was only one inch. I think two inches is too big. For me, two inches is too big. So I knew I wanted it smaller. So I was like, all right, I want it to finish one and a half inches. So I actually started by drawing kind of like a courthouse step where I was drawing these all straight, you know, coming around. So I had, whoops, let's do a new one. New, easy draw. Nope, don't save that one. So I was doing one and a half and one and a half. And I do have, I did 12 inches and then 48. I always, whatever this number is, I generally speaking, make that quadruple that. And then this one here, it made it a little bit smaller. And then here. So the first thing I made is a courthouse step in the size logs that I wanted, which were one and a half inches. And started from the outside because honest Pete, I wouldn't have known what size square to do in the middle. So started from the outside, worked my way in. Now that I look at it, isn't this is kind of like that Christmas village that we made? It's sort of like this with these, all right? So that's what I started with. And then I'm like, all right, well, now I know that my center block is going to finish three inches. All right, so all right, that, that gave me some information. Now it was a matter of how to add the triangles so that they were just one size. Is that going to work? There. Yep. Do, do. So the first set of them actually all came together. But then from there, it didn't. So what I actually said, like one, two, three, four, five, six. One, so from this corner, one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I count that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I knew that those triangles would all be the same. They weren't cutting into, in some of those other ones, the triangles cut into these different logs 
and I didn't want it to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because, you know, with quilt as you go kind of blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, you really want them to be more basic. You don't want to have to do a ton of different um, piecing because you're doing it on the entire block. So to do, you know, something really complicated on that, is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. It just wouldn't be easy. And typically when I'm looking at doing things with that stitch and flip method, I'm looking for easy, right? So there's my design. I come over, I go to color and then come back. Now I can get rid of the unwanted lines. I don't want that one, I don't want that one. You know what? And it seems, honestly, you might think this seems so simple because I'm making it look simple. Um, but yesterday or the day before yesterday when I was designing it, I had probably drew it up 15 times before I actually got there. That's what I wanted. I had to go back and forth and back and forth. So these triangles were all the same. I couldn't find anything in, you know, EQ or blackface that were. And maybe I just wasn't looking in the right place. That's always a possibility. And then I did scrappy. So I used lots of different grays. Just went and downloaded all of the ones that I could find from different um, things that I had saved. Because I like it to be scrappy. I, in the pattern, I actually wrote it so that you can do it all in just two colors if you want. And then did the blues. And this was like, you know, and it was like for, for the lines. And then I put a dark one in the middle and then saved that block. All right, there's my block. Then when it came to designing the quilt, because I'm using the easy sashings technique. So with the easy sashings technique, between each block is a one inch sashing. So if I do a one inch sashing, that's the setting. Now you do got to keep in mind, all right, where's all my blocks? There they are, I should get rid of some stuff. There's too much stuff in here. There, that's the one I just did. You do have to keep in mind, if you're designing with easy sashings in mind, that the fabric requirement for this one inch sashing is only gonna be an inch and a half the way it is here. But with easy sashings, you actually cut it a two inch strip with that half inch seam allowance. So just something to think about if you're gonna design with easy sashing, you need to consider that or change the size of your easy sashings designs. So that basically is what I did. And I took some, one of the grays and put them in there. And I took one of the blues and put them in there and there. And then I did at some point add a border to it. Let's make it a six inch border. Oh, and then with the border for the easy sashings, because the first border here is actually the sashings themselves. So you'll get a line here and here. And then the top one, you actually get another line that goes all the way across. So to get the one where it comes, you get two of them. I did, which one did I do? And every time I do it, I have to come back and rethink it. Is it that one? Yep, I did that one. And then take it down to just one block. And that way, when you do easy sashings, the first border is just gonna go from the edge of the block to the edge of the block. And then this is how you attach the final border, which looks silly, but if you add a little strip here, then it looks more correct. Like that. Ah, voila. That is the designing of the easy the pineapple one that I did. So not sure if any of you saw that or not, but if you did, if you want this, I can actually send this to you. Um, so just shoot me an email and I'll send that over to you. So you don't have to redraw it. I, I don't have Barbara Breckman's historical knowledge by any means. You're welcome. Sonia has given us a thumbs up. That's pretty cool. Um, but you know, if I've designed it, there's just no sense in you guys having to go and redesign it. If you're just wanting to play with colors, because I'd say that the majority of people that use EQ 
use it so that they can play with the colors. So get your layout in, the size you want, and then what color do you want to make it? So I can send that to you because you guys are designer level members, okay? Questions? You're the quietest little bunch. I wish my kindergarten <laughs> Sunday school was this quiet. I'll tell you. <laughs> no questions? All right. My questions. You got a question? Who? I was going to say, it's very clever. Very clever. <laughs> yeah, I love that word. It's clever. She said clever last night on the live. And I was like, you know, we don't use clever. We don't That's say really. You know, you're so clever. Oh. We say you're so smart. And every time we watch British TV and they say clever, Bill and I are like, we should say that more often. Clever. Yeah, it's we'll say clever. clever. <laughs> All right. Our next session will not be on the fourth Thursday of the month because I will be in Tanzania. And I will be in Tanzania on the 18th. Um, so we are going to do February 1st. And that'll make sense. So it'll be four weeks apart. We'll be able to do February 1st and then February 29th. So it's just one day off. So EQ will be 6 p.m. on February 1st. And by then I will, I think I told you I'm going to Tanzania on a missions trip and I'll be able to, sh I'll do a, a video. I'll, I'll show you all my pictures from the trip. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah, you'll be a captive audience. <laughs> Nobody else will want to see them. All right. And it would be great if somebody came up with an idea. What is it that you want me to show? Right. So thank you very much, Sonia, for the questions on block base, because I think it is it's one of those programs that you just don't know is out there. Um, but it really has a lot of really great qualities to it. And it's got features on it that I'm hoping they will get into EQ sooner than later. OK. All right. Anything else? Yeah, we good? All right. We good. And we'll see you guys all in five weeks this time. And think of me. Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy that's it. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. I appreciate you. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.